Well, hi, everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, over the weekend, I had the opportunity to go on Ball Busters with Quantum Eraser and talk about the Marine Sextant. Now, the reasons I went on was to try and clear up some misconceptions that the Flat Earth community has been spreading around in the last few weeks. Now, actually, I just went on to piss Quantum Eraser off and push his buttons. But there was some educational value to it. So let's cue up the music and have a listen. Okay, so before we get on with the fun, let's identify and clarify the problems the Flat Earth has understanding the sextant and celestial navigation. First and foremost, a foundational idea in celestial navigation is that light from celestial objects arrives at Earth in parallel. So if we had a celestial object out in that general direction, if you were here at what they call the geographic position, which means that it's directly over your head, that is a line from the center of the Earth to the celestial object passing through the surface of the Earth at a right angle. Now, what they fail to understand is that light anywhere that object is visible on Earth comes in in parallel rays. So this light right here, also coming from that very same object comes in at exactly the same angle. These two lines are parallel. They never meet. They never get closer together. They are parallel. Now, just to make sure that we thoroughly understand the geometry of this, this is the angle from your horizontal at your location to that celestial object. It is identical to that angle right there. And that is also identical to that angle. The fact that there is a right angle there is meaningless beyond the fact that it shows it's at a right angle to the surface of the Earth. There is no triangle here. There is no triangulation. There is nothing that says that we somehow have to make a triangle there or we have to aim in that general direction. None of that is correct. We don't triangulate the distance to celestial objects. All we do is we measure the angle from the horizontal that that light arrives at our position. We use that angle to calculate our position on Earth. Now, in its most basic form, we need two things, well, three. We need three things to calculate our rough position on the Earth. We need a naval almanac that tells us where all the celestial bodies are and what their geographic positions are. We need a sextant, which only measures the angle between the horizon and that celestial object. And we need a wristwatch with accurate time. The reason that we use a wristwatch is that we have to calibrate our wristwatch to what's called local solar noon, which is when the sun is directly south of us and highest in the sky. By measuring this angle, we can then do a little bit of math on it and we can figure out we are on a certain circle of latitude. Now, the next thing that we need to do is find out what our longitude is. So, at a particular time, We have the sun directly south of us. We look at our watch and we note the local time. We then compare that time to the time in Greenwich, England. And that tells us how far west we are of Greenwich, England. That gives us our longitude and says that we are right here. That is very basic celestial navigation. Now, there's another thing that you can do, and that's called a three-star fix. And this confuses the Flat Earthers quite a bit because they think that because this is called triangulation and this is called the navigation triangle, 
that somehow this 90 degree angle here allows us to triangulate to the distance to the star or that's even necessary. It's not. Now say we have a celestial object out in this general direction and that's the geographic position of that celestial object. If we read an altitude to this celestial object of 60 degrees at that position, we can form a circle an equal distance from that geographic position and along that circle at every point, if we look at that same celestial object, it will have an altitude of 60 degrees. Now the reason that circles of equal altitude are important is that we can look at a number of different objects in the sky and develop a circle of equal altitude for each one of them. Now say we look at three stars. One star will have a circle of equal altitude that looks like that because there is the geographic position. Another star will have a geographic position here and its circle of equal altitude will look like that. Now, we are either here or we are here. Say we get a third star and its geographic position is out here because the circle of equal altitude is directly around that geographic position. And if this is out by the edge of the Earth here, that circle of equal altitude will curve around on the other side of the curve. Now, when we do that, now we know that our actual position is about right there. That is the triangulation that is used in celestial navigation. There are no right triangles. And there's no calculating the height of a star from your position. You know, that's just the basic summary of what I wanted to talk about. And, you know, just giving this short 15-minute discussion on it would have been just fine, and maybe they might have learned something. But you know that didn't happen, right? Let's go ahead and cue the tape. Look, Bob, I'll give you, if you've passed, okay. if you think you've passed the, Bob, Bob. If you think you've passed the intelligence test of Bob and Alice, I'll give you that, right? It's cool. Yeah, it's right there. Don't, that's don't what, See, that's down no, no, for Bob. No need, no, no need to waste anybody's And that's time. down for Alice. It, no issues at all. So that, that gets rid of Bob and Alice. Not, all right. Not really. So, not, not, not really. That was a no, really bad. Hold, all on, right. hold on. I just got back. Oh, oh hold man. On, I'm trying to record. Damn it. Hold on, Adam. I just got back. What the f Bob. Yeah? Are you, re are you retarded? Why would you ask that? Well, you just drew your little f on the board and said, well, that's all for Bob and Alice. Let me ask it you It is question. all for Bob and Alice. Yeah, let me There's ask no you a more question, to it. Crayon Muncher. Crayon Muncher, let me ask all you right. a question. First, all right, now, QE. No, eight inches per mile square. I'm more than Shut happy. I'm more than happy to talk to you guys, oh. but I'm not going to be called names. You're all right. I don't know. I'm trying to get this screen grab, man. You don't Come on. Your little Bob and Alice, you're a all Idiot. right, we already know that, but we're trying to get the, the retarded uh, <laughs> argument for his sexton thing right, he's about right, to do right, on the I'll border. Let it go. I got you, Elijah. Go ahead, Goody. Oh, man. you never cease to amaze, Huey. Yeah, you never cease to amaze me. I'll shut my Yeah, all right. Yeah, you're a dumb It's conundrum. Yeah, conundrum. Right. You so what? So what? You clown. So what? The second law of thermodynamics. What's the second law of thermodynamics, Bob? Does it have Fat something to do tail. with sextants? Clown. Because that's what I'm here to talk about. Uh, yeah, you guys want to hear about Elijah. sextants or you just want to listen to Kiwi call me names? Yeah, because yeah, we you're a That a sextant works on the ball go ahead. and not on the flat earth. Yeah. Go ahead. I'll let you go. That's all Pizza's right, Kiwi, with you? Yes, pizza's not here yet. All right, well, you can eat and listen at the same time, too, if you'd like. I ain't going to so. listen to you, Bob. Um, well, I want to okay. save IQ points. I want to save my 220, so you could just go ahead. Your 220? Uh, are, you, are you recording this, QE? Because if so, I don't have to screen grab it. I've got it, and uh, it's going to run uninterrupted. Screen grab it. I'll be more than happy to go ahead and provide copies to anybody. All right, so what's the angle that we actually measure with a sextant? 
Does anybody know? Let, let look look. Let's let's no. Let's not pretend we're in class, Bob. Let let's right. just you give us your explanation how a sextant works on a sphere. All and right. That's probably the most succinct way of dealing with this. We we you know there's no point in having kind of daft questions, is there? You just go ahead and explain it to us. And I think if we've got a a point we have an issue with or need clarifying if you don't mind we can interject not a problem let you me turn this okay one off because there's a bit of a glare can you guys still see that okay yeah all right so I've got, here, I've here's got, what we I've have got. here's our location right here and there is the this is the line from the center of the earth to directly over our head this is 90 degrees now this is the tangent line oh, oh, right just, here that, that looks bob can you hear me yes that looks totally off 90 degrees as like a starting example of what we're going to talk about. It looks like it's about 15. Okay, well, degrees. good for you. All right. Uh, so here's the, the vertex. Or, uh, Bob, I'm just... Degrees. Bob, Bob, I'm not attacking you. I'm just asking. So yep. we can imagine here what's going on. On your screen, that's not like 12 o'clock, mate. It doesn't look it. So I'm just saying... Are we okay, well, that's fine. Go ahead and... I'll tell you what, hold your questions until I'm done with the basic presentation and then you can knock no, yourself out. The basic, that was the basic point. You start with 90 degrees and we're at one o'clock, mate. Not you can start o'clock. anywhere you want. All right, so oh, here's okay. a line from the okay. center of the earth. So you, yeah, no, well, so you twisted it on purpose. The nitpicking is, the nitpicking oh, is not letting me get to his whole just, argument. That yeah, would be so oh, well. You? I'm recording this, guys. I don't have yeah, infinite lovely, amount of time lovely. on my phone. Just, just for clarity so that we don't, mess people's perceptions up etc could we start 90 degrees at 12 o'clock no could you just those, we're going to start like this lines out yeah, no we're starting like this had, all right clarity it helps so this is more. our location so right here trying to not give clarity to everybody you're trying to this you know kind well, of why are you this, this is our snide. is what we call our yeah. zenith which is directly okay, over our head at 90 off. degrees to our back. location so at point one, when talking to your audience, you've, you've had a request from your Why? audience to not be snide, and you've denied it. Why? Just move the little man. Move him. Make Why? Are you done? He already yeah, put the zenith over the person. On. Why do we care? I just Are you done? Because like, oh, 10 degrees off square is not a great way of visualizing if you're going to do a visualization of things that's my point, well, you're not going to let him make all the mistakes he's going to make you're going to just no, stop just him, him at every chance. i'm just well he already i don't chance. want a chance i want to see him okay. fuck this up from start to finish let him do okay. it okay bro i'll let him do that so hard isn't it now are you done let the baller do are you done are you asking me Bob? yes i'm asking you are you done no I'd like you to just realign it, but are you? I'm going not to going that? to. No, then no. I will accept. We're Very good. starting off. All right. So representation. Okay, so let's have a quick look at this. The first thing that you'll notice is that I make these people very nervous because one, they know I know what I'm talking about, and two, they know that they can't intimidate me. They still tried that. You notice the profanity laced tantrum that quantum eraser started off with and then this gentleman adam you notice that he hasn't stopped talking the entire time he also tried to say well we're not here in class well yes actually you are in class i am schooling you on celestial navigation and correcting your misconceptions with it so yeah you are in class now i asked very nicely for him to hold his questions until i had a pause in my presentation but you notice that he doesn't want to do that. He wants to criticize the slight angle that I've drawn from the center of the earth, as if the slight angle makes any difference whatsoever. Second, he constantly is over-talking, and he's, just, he's not talking to make any points. He's talking to make noise and be a distraction. And the thing that's really frustrating him is that I'm ignoring him and just continuing on with my presentation. I'm not responding to every silly question and objection that he has. I'm charging on with my presentation. So let's go ahead and continue. Okay, bro. I'll let him do that. 
It's so hard, isn't it? Now are you done? Let the baller are you done? Are you asking me, Bob? Yes, I'm asking you. Are you done? No, I'd like you to just realign it. But are you? I'm going not to going do that? to. No, then no. I will accept. We're Very good. starting off. All right. So representation. This point Sorry. right here is at what we call our zenith, and it is directly over our head at 90 degrees. Now. We cannot measure directly from the ground because literally, we'd have to literally have the telescope of the sextant right on the ground. So we're gonna measure it from some point above the ground, say here. Let's make that the deck of a ship. Now we're gonna look from this location to a star, which is here. Now, the light from the stars comes in in parallel due to the distances involved. So that's the angle that the light from the star is going to come in in parallel to. And we are going to measure an angle from, with our sextant from our visible horizon to that star. And that's this angle right here, and that's called HS. That is the angle of the sextant. All right, everybody with me so far? No, I've got a problem. HS Go right ahead. Is the angle of this, yeah, uh, HS is the angle of the sextant. Correct. That's the angle you measure you with just, the sextant. Can you just, can you, you see your little man on the diagram. Can you just draw his sextant on there and show how the angles match? And that will help. Yeah. Better? You happy now? Well, look. Lovely. Can, That's can you see the little man right there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We good? Yeah, that's what I was asking for. Just, just to example. Not a problem. Why. So we've got a raise in height, not a change in angle. Correct. Just a raise in height. Okay. Now, do you see what I did right there? He was constantly interrupting me, and then he finally raised an absolutely silly objection. Well, can you put the man up? Where the platform of the ship is because he can't seem to visualize that in his head that i've moved the person from the surface to the deck of a ship and i'm just putting the one line in to avoid cluttering it so what i did was i took control of the situation i stopped what i was doing i moved the man i asked him several times to confirm that he could see where the man was and it was clear to him where the man was and then I asked him if it was all right for me to continue. I acknowledged the fact that he had interrupted my program, and I asked him for his permission to continue with my program. Now, normally what would happen would be, there would be a pause in the action, the person would just continue on. I wanted to make it a point to have silence there so that he knew I was waiting on his response and only his response and he had to give me permission to continue. So let's go ahead and continue here. But that's how you take control of, you know, that's how you take control of a classroom, that's how you deal with small children, and that's how you deal with people like this. But I don't fall for that crap, and that's why they don't like me over there, and that's why you don't see me on Nathan Oakley's either. Now, the angle that we actually measure is one up to the star, which will be here, and one down to our visible horizon. Now, in order to get an actual angle to that star, we need to know this angle right here, that angle. That's called the altitude of the star. That's the one that we need first. And in order to do that, we make a few corrections. And what we do is once we've made the corrections, and those include uh, instrument error, that's the dip. That is refraction. What sort of refraction and semi diameter account for here, Bob? Is that standard refraction, or do we also account for seven over six R refraction? Uh, it comes from it comes from a chart in the Naval Almanac. No, no, no. And Which that is the standard refraction. Yes, just standard refraction. So we don't account right. for seven over six R here, no. No, it's standard refraction based. Just, just. 
standard based on the observed refraction. angle. Just standard refraction. Yes, and it's based no on seven, it's based on the angle. So no seven over six r. <coughs> no seven over six r. The radius of Thank the Earth you. has nothing to do with anything to do with a sextant. Cool. All right. That's that's one error that I keep hearing from I you guys. You keep talking about R. Statement. There's no R in there's no R in celestial navigation. The radius I mean, of the yeah, Earth has know. no place in it. We that. know. I totally agree yeah. with you. And nobody's ever claimed that there was an R in celestial navigation. Just 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 to, Bob, just before we, we carry know. on, I'm I'm the oh, and you just you can go next, mate. Just just for my understanding. So we've got I can't read the first one. It's too small. I've got dip. What's the one above it, Bob? This is instrument error, or it's actually yeah, called yeah. index error is the name of it. But it's an instrument error that comes from the instrument itself. Shaky hand syndrome. That's fine. No, yeah. no, um, it doesn't have anything to do with shaky hand syndrome. So no operator error in there then? No, that's part of uh, running a sextant. Operator error. All right, so... Error. The way a sextant oh, works. Carry on, no, Bob. 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 What? I'm enjoying this. Slow. Slow down. Slow down. Well, what you asked about you index put... error, and I'm telling you what it is. Now, here is a sextant. I now, didn't ask about index error. I I asked what instrumental error said. It's called before. index yeah. error. No. It's no, from no, the instrument. You wrote instrumental error. Instrument error. That's the dip. I said I wrote oh. instrument error, and it's called oh, index oh, error. It comes oh, from the instrument Steve. itself. Steve, stop trying to cover up for something you've not even done a faux pas on. It's cool. I only asked what was the No, I'm telling you what dip. instrument error is, if you would like to know. Stop would you like to know what, what an index error know. is? So, w would you like to dip. know what index error is? No, not in the slightest. Never asked for it. Um, what I'd like to know is what I asked for and you've given me, and then I can carry on from that, which was what was above dip, because I couldn't read your handwriting. Yeah? That's, yeah, it we'll just, instrumental. here, let's it see says, if we can make it, let's see if we can make oh, it easier for you. Bob, slow down. It says instrumental error. Instrument error. That's the dip. Cool. I said I, instrument error. It's actually called in, index error, but it's oh, instrument error so, from the oh, instrument oh, itself. Hold up, hold up. So you, you are prepared to rub that out. So a non-90 degrees in the diagram, you're not going to change, but you're now going to change a word and meaning. Because so, you couldn't read it. So, can uh, you read uh, that? I can read that because it's a Great. completely different word written bigger box. All right. So we have so dip, we have, have refraction, and we have semi-diameter. No, 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 no. Maybe you'd like to describe the difference between index and instrumental because you feel it's I didn't write instrumental, but I wrote instrument. Yeah. Instrument error. That's the dip. Instrument and they're interchangeable. Okay. They're interchangeable, and it's not something I want to continue but, but on talking instrument, about because it's a waste agree. of time. I agree. Instrument and instrumental are. Index and instrumental aren't, though, are they? So yes, they the are. The point I was going to ask you was, would you explain, like to explain why you've changed that and what the inference of the change of the word that you've just put on the board means, please? Thank none. You. There's none. none. So index, instrumental. Instrument error. That's the dip. Oh, and instrument. instrument. Are all the same word now, yeah? Instrument. The index error index. is instrument error. It says index. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm not going to continue index. on that because it's kind of a waste of time. No, because you're proving yourself to be talking now, nonsense, mate. You just changed next. the word and said it's not the same. Next, we're going to go ahead and Next, talk about on. how we actually get the reading of this angle. So here is the horizon that we see through the telescope and through the horizon mirror. Okay. Now, what we do is we change the angle. We start off at the sun, say we're shooting the sun, 
we start off at the sun and then we move the arm, we move this arm forward to follow the sun down to the horizon. And what we end up with is the sun sitting on the horizon like so. Everybody see that okay? When it's on the horizon, is that its actual position or is that its position plus refraction? So it's non-actual position. It's when we see it on the horizon as I've drawn right here. Yeah, but when it's on okay. the horizon, is that where it actually is? Or if we were to take the atmosphere away? Now, once again, he's trying to cloud the waters here. I've already talked about the HS, which is the raw angle that the sextant measures. And I've talked about the corrections that are on there. Now, he may not have heard that because he was too busy trying to overtalk everything. But that was index error. Although I said instrument at the first, on the first one because people understand what instrument versus index means a little easier. But he had trouble reading it, so I rewrote it. Then I had dip error. Then I had refractive error, which is what he's alluding to right now, but doesn't want to wait for me to explain how it comes into play. And then semi-diameter. And of course, he has no idea what that is, so he doesn't even know what to ask about it. But as you see, I'm going through all of this step by step, and he wants to continuously try and control the conversation. Now, what I've done here is I'm going to go ahead and put him on mute so that he can't continue to interrupt, and I can actually get this out. Now, whether or not the people on Ballbusters were able to hear it, that's fine. You can hear it here, and if they want to learn, they can come here and watch it we would have no refraction is that where it would be now do you guys want to learn about this or you just want to keep yeah, interrupting with inane questions you're trying to tell me this is where this thing okay is, well then stop asking you, questions and listen to what i'm saying if i take oh, the now, atmosphere away that's not where it is right here details what we do is we is we we move this we adjust the sextant all right i'm just going to go ahead and mute you because i can't i can't continue my discussion if you're going to continue interrupting reasonable questions that are on even on wikipedia and you're just denying would you mind doing this in like one sync video because uh i mean adam doesn't want me to have the screen grab at all all right now, I think it's rather obvious what he's trying to do here. He's trying to get me to talk about 7 over 6R and then say, how do I know R? He's trying to derail the discussion in the class by going down this rabbit hole of, you know, how do you know what R is? Well, R has nothing to do with anything in celestial navigation, and I just made that quite clear. Despite the fact he keeps trying to make this distinction that somehow 7 over 6R has something to do with refraction. Now, what they fail to realize is that 7 over 6R is just an algebraic expression. We know the radius of the Earth, we represent it by R, and we multiply it by 7 and divide it by 6. We could take, without talking about the radius of the Earth, we could take 3959 miles times 7 divided by 6, and that's the radius of the refracted curve. We don't have to even mention the word R. We could just use the actual number and say that's the refraction radius that we're dealing with with this refracted light. We don't have to have the radius of the Earth anywhere, and radius of the Earth is not required for celestial navigation. But we can get along just fine assigning a 60 nautical mile value to every degree that the angle of the star changes. We're fine with that. Don't have to have a radius of the Earth at all. That was a good try, Adam, but once again, I'm not your typical guest there. I don't fall for your little tricks. Well, no, I've, I've got this recorded and I'll be happy to send me a DM and I'll send you a link to the full uninterrupted recording so you can see it. Now, I've gone ahead and turned him down because I can't have all these interruptions and make any presentation. So what I've done is I've moved the, what we call the lower limb of the sun so that it just touches the horizon. And you actually rock the section back and forth a couple of times to make sure that that's absolutely at the bottom of the arc. Then you read off the angle directly from the sextant and it's accurate to 0.2 minutes of angle. A minute of angle is 1 60th of a degree. So that gives you your HS reading. Now you have a couple of corrections that you have to make from there. First is your dip angle, which is this angle right here. This is dip. Next, you also have to correct for refraction. 
because as you know, the atmosphere causes refraction and bends the light, and the star will appear here when it's actually down here. So that's where we put the refraction correction in. And the last correction that needs to be made is right here with the sun. We are measuring to what's called the lower limb of the sun, which is the bottom of the sun. Now, the sun itself is about 31 minutes wide. So you go to the Naval Almanac and you find out for this month, based on how far, the, how far we are out in our orbit from the sun, the relative size of the sun, and what we do is we find this semi-diameter right here, and we add that to our reading, and that gives us a reading directly to the center of the sun. So that's our dip angle, or that's our semi-diameter right there. And the end result is that we take a reading from our horizontal to the center of the sun. Now, there's been a lot of hay made about 90 degree angles at the geographic position and triangles, and somehow there's a claim that there's flatness between the location of your sextant and the location of the GP. That's simply not the case. What you're doing, here's the GP of that star right here. And again, I've got this drawn so it's between us and the horizon, but it could be way down here too. The only reason that there's a right angle here is to demonstrate that that star is at 90 degrees to that point on Earth. Now, the angle that we measure is from the horizontal at our location to the star, and that's this angle right here. So now that we have this angle, when you're dealing with the sun, you have to subtract that from 90 degrees to get what's called the zenith angle. The zenith angle is your latitude. Now, does anybody have any questions right now? I'm going to go ahead and let him come back up a little bit. All right, give me a second, Adam. I'm bringing you back up. Okay, Adam, do you have questions now? Yeah, what, what would be very helpful is you've shown that um, differential and how you've explained the difference between the angle for the GP position of the star and the angle for the observers measuring the angle i'm looking at your diagram yes the star for the gp is in black correct the star for the gp the observer is in sorry the the, the star for the observer is in red i was just this talking is, about the uh i was just talking this, about this, the effective is, refraction this, there well maybe you could draw it on your board or is yeah. it so that they're in an equal position? No, that's the light from the star. It's in parallel. The, all, the light from the star comes in like that. We're getting that ray, and it's the ray that's coming to our position. It's not you, down you, here. You, right, uh, let me explain. You, where the observer is, yeah? Draw. Can you draw the straight line on the observer to the star, please? Right there. On the, to the star. That is to the star. The light no, from the star is coming in depends. in parallel. The, the star is way the out there. Depends. It will draw it out because we're going to measure the angle to that. The angle here is it, this ray right here to the geographic position is coming in in, ex, is in parallel to this, ang, this star right here, or this light right so, here. You your, see, that's, that's I, misconception I know, I know number one. Board. I know, I know on your whiteboard, you've, you've represented, what, half of the whole Earth. I'm asking you in geometry to just represent how these angles work. What we've got at the moment is angles, whether they're straight lines, going from your ball Earth. You keep pointing. No, no, it's not a ball Earth. Line. That's not what... Listen, Bob. Not ball Earth. God, Earth. God was good to you, wasn't he? He gave you two ears and one mouth. Yeah? Double up on the listening, just for a second, please. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I'm asking you, in your diagram, 
to put your star in and draw your two lines to demonstrate how your geometry works, please. Right there. Now that's that none of your lines of measurement go to that dot there. That you've just put well, your that's through. problem number on one diagram, that you have. Will that's... you put your star in and to demonstrate your geometry, please? I did. No, the you star haven't. is you could. you could take your pen out. All right, you, you see here, let's draw this to scale with like three thunderbolts, four thunderbolts coming in. All right, you shall we draw it to scale then? Would that help? Your straight lines that underpins the geometry that you've just taught 15 minutes. That's the geometry right there, and that's one of the that's major fine. problems that well, you have. Would that you like that to scale? So you're standing by that? Yes, absolutely. That's the Thank that's the foundation much. of celestial Thank navigation. Thank you very much. That, that, then, God bless you, my friend. If that you think, what you've just put up there... No, I don't think it. The geometry of what you're calculating, then you're standing by that, yeah? Absolutely, that's the way it is. Absolutely, there you go. It's simply the way it is. Now, if you want this drawn to scale and you want to see where the star is that's giving you these parallel light rays, on this scale, it would be 8,000 miles that way. So because it's 8,000 miles that way, all of the light is coming in in parallel. So. This angle right here, or this light beam right here, is parallel to that one, and they both go back to the same star. I drew this out here to be convenient to you, but we'll go ahead and make it a little easier for you. All of these arrows right here are pointing to the star. You're, you're saying for your diagram to make sense, mm -hmm. it needs to be 8,000 miles wide. No, not at all. It can be a point source of light 8,000 miles away, and they'll still all come in in parallel. I'm on about for your diet for you to be able to draw your diagram of reality to me. Just did. You need a whiteboard 8,000 miles square. Yeah, but I'm not going to do that because I'm going to rely on your ability to think in three dimensions. Three all dimensions. Right? It's a whiteboard, Bob. Yeah. So. Look, I'm only look at what I'm drawing on the whiteboard and, and three, listen to what I'm telling you. No, no, you listen to me. You just said you rely with a cheap ad hom for me to rely on my ability to think in three. This is a yes, 2D I representation, am. retard. I absolutely am relying on you to be able to think in three dimensions. Oh, you betcha. You just and understand you. scale. You're, you're stuttering and you just realized that all of what you just presented to people, all the angles, all the pretty diagrams you've just drawn, Absolutely you correct. In reality, needs an eight thousand mile square whiteboard. Absolutely not. You just said that. What do you mean, absolutely? What not? I said was that I. What I said was that all the light comes in in parallel, and if you wanted it to scale, on this I'd scale, it would have to be some eight thousand miles exactly. away. So exactly. Are you? Do you have any other questions? This is your chance. Do you have any other questions? This is my chance. Is it? Yes. This is my moment. Is it? This is my moment with you, Bob. Yep. A special moment with me and you. Yep. Okay. Well, I guess nothing else. All right. I, I do have another question. Go right ahead. Instrumental and index. Instrument error. That's the dip. Okay, this is my audio track. This is his audio track. He does not stop talking the entire time. I'm presenting information here and he is continuously talking through it. First of all, that's probably why he thought I said instrumental instead of instrument, because he wasn't listening to what I said. I'm conducting a class for him to listen. That does not involve him talking. Second, he's trying to make a big deal about me saying instrumental, according to him, and now I've changed it to index, and now I've changed it to instrument. I was consistent the entire time. The index error is an instrument error. That is correct. 
I never once said instrumental. But he's trying to make a big deal out of this to lay doubt about my competency and expertise in this field. Much like Quantum Eraser likes to make fun of people if they happen to mispronounce a word once. You know, it has absolutely nothing to do with whether or not they're right. He does it simply to try and attack the person and poison the well, so to say. But we'll go ahead and continue. Index. Why are they the same I words? never said instrumental. You rubbed it out and wrote index then. What's the I wrote out then? instrument. The reason that you rubbed one out okay. and wrote that again. I wrote instrument, not instrumental. I wrote okay. instrument. Instrument and yes. index. Yes, the index error is error due to the instrument. Just the interest. All right. And this is where I said, so there's no uh, operator error in there. No. Your operator error is whether or not you get the right answer. When, when you use a sextant, is there an operator? All right. We're going to move on now, okay? No, 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 so no. Now that I'm not screen recorded, I'm, I'm not going to let, no. There has to be an operator correction for how high you are above the plane, right? Yeah, that's the you're dip saying, error. You're saying that's not... That's the dip correction. And you're not above any plane. You're above the surface. Say you're at the on the deck of a boat. You may be 40 feet off of the sea. And as a result of that, you're going to look down to the horizon and up to the star. The angle you're looking for is that angle right there. You, this is the dip correction right here. You clear on that? All right. You also seem to be making a tremendous amount of hay on what kind of horizon we're looking at. You don't need to see the horizon. You get a sextant reading. He's put us all on mute. No, you're not on mute. You're not on mute at all. All right. So, as I said, Okay, so these two lines are parallel to each other. And they are tangent. Hey, Bob. Hey, Dr. Yeah, Bob. Yeah, you're going yes, to need sir. R, Bob. Dr. Bob, you're on mute. Okay, well, hey, then unmute retard. me. Look here. I just muted your dumbass. You are having a discussion with Adam. You do not mute him, retard. Do you understand me? He has questions for you. Answer the phone up. Do you understand me? Take He's not on mute, mute. Or you're done. He's not on mute. But if you'd like me to stop now, now I'm more than welcome to. I, I don't I have a problem with stop. that. He has. I want you to stop right here with your. <laughs> and I'm going to rip up here in a few minutes and let Adam ask his question. Okay. Thanks. This might be a discord issue, though. It's not. <laughs> and we're looking at him. Really? All right. Because I could hear you constantly. There's none of them. Answer. Bob. What? Can you hear Adam? Yeah. Can you please? Yeah. Can you please answer him? Hello, All right, Bob. Adam. What's your question related to this? Uh, it's related to what you rubbed off. We we, we yet to progress on to this point. Um, you did a lovely demonstration and I asked you to point out the triangulation point and we accept that it would require a very big white. What triangulation point? Have you There's no triangulation point to the star. Oh my God. Oh my God. What? <laughs> no, what triangulation point are you talking about? Where do you what, think what, there's what, a triangulation Bob, point here? Bob, Bob, Bob. I, I... Yes, hold on, Adam. You... What now, is Adam, where do you think a triangulation the... point should be? On. What is the purpose of the sextant? To measure this angle right here. Me to triangulate your position, you... Oh, triangulate God, how? You need to be institutionalized. Triangulate how? Triangulate how? You triangulate how are you kidding? Oh, go right ahead and tell me where the triangulation is, Qe. All right. Tell me where the triangulation is, Qe. You 
know what the purpose of the sexton is and you're giving a class that was insane oh, the triangle on now you're gonna be are you done now no no because no, no. here's the thing effective if you're gonna get the angle to the star you it can't be everywhere there's the angle to it the star right. right there. It's everywhere. Right there. It don't matter. Who even knows the person? <laughs> well, I mean, you can laugh and you can call me names all you want, but that's the way it works. You're busted. You're done. No. Yeah. Oh, so I guess you're. I guess you're fine you're with. You're busted. Um... Fraud. Okay. You're a fraud. Well, I guess there's Fuck nothing with. further for me you to talk about if you guys sexton. are going to just scream over me. What is the purpose of a sexton? Yeah, go on mute, you fucking abject retard. I just wanted to let you get it out of your system. I thought maybe you'd feel a little better. Oh. Get it you're out of your retard. system, John. You're yeah, retard. Thanks. thanks. John, yeah. get it out of your system. You'll feel better. Or can you give us... Have you seen any fists appearing out of nothing recently, Bob? I have no idea what you're talking about. Four levels of protein structure. Have you figured out what those are, you... Of course I know what those are, but I'm not. That's not what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about sextants today. All right, so I mean, John, do you, you want to hear about sextants, or do you want to sit down and just make yourself look foolish? Ever again, you piece of shit. Got of here. Now, unfortunately, at this point, the Discord somewhat degenerated into a name-calling festival. Let me go ahead and listen to it for a little while longer, see if there's anything else of note. If not, we're going to go ahead and end this. Yeah, I bet. You done? You feel better, John? That's you know the one, would, John. Would that's the one, John. John hold, that's, hold on. Adam, that. Adam, Adam. No, that let John get it out. He needs to. No, because I was going to ridicule him. I've been busting his ass for, oh, a year now, so let him, let him have his moment of glory. Busting. <laughs> you couldn't debunk or bust fucking baby Huey's ass, Bob. You're fucking institutionalized retard. All right, when you're done, let me know, and I'll finish this uh, you if are. you want. You're done. You don't know. It was. We just compromised your dumb ass. What is the purpose of a sex in John? A triangular. And where's that triangulation? Where is that triangulation, John? Oh my God! You didn't even know. No, you tell me where we, the where you think the triangulation tape, is. We got you on tape, Bob. Where do you You're think fucked. the triangulation is, John? You're fucked. Up your sister's ass, Bob. Oh, how nice! You know, my Isn't sister it? died. Oh. That really wasn't I very don't nice give of you, John. The triangulation fuck. is between you holding the sextant, I don't give a flying fuck, you... and a star. <laughs> Well, currently they have me on mute. Um, you know, that was after quite a session of just calling me names and swearing at me and constant interruptions with silly things. One of the biggest problems that they have is they can't understand the concept of parallel light coming in from the sun, the planets, the moon, and the stars. That's the foundation of celestial navigation. And they don't want to hear about it because it completely disproves their idea of a small local sun over a flat earth. And they know it. That's pretty typical. Now, they're kind of going bana going bananas here in the uh, in the chat, but that's all right. Fortunately, all of this stuff is on tape. 